All right, good day there, fans there from the BBPM, as we know for today here. It is the exchange grand finals here between the Beefy Balls and the Buckcan Beers. Of course, uh, helping us with the cast here today will be Ace the Face. Say hello to the rest of the crowd there, lads. How's it going, everybody? All right, so we've got some time there, as we know. It's uh, one of the coaches has actually shown up. He's gotten back from the whorehouse. Um, we're just waiting for Placebo to actually show up here. So would you like to uh, take us through the teams here? Um, first things first here. Let's actually look at what you consider the underdogs here. The Beefy Bulls. Tell me what you think of this team. Uh, I think they're a good team. Catch by someone that knows what they're doing. But I just don't think they've... Uh, if I can even find the team here, because I'm trying to find the damn competition um they just had they're just going up against somebody though with a team that i don't think he expected uh to come out and basically be a force that he is like he just came in and i don't i think cadet has honestly put in a crap ton of uh well, pounding it's on teams, so the beefy balls are going to have their hands full trying to just stop the blitzers of the Buccaneers. Yeah, just a D. Now, let's take a look here. Beefy balls, they've only got nine players left on their roster. Now, do you remember when there was that little intermission before they qualified for the finals, they had a chance to restock their roster, and we see how well that worked. So, take oh, a yeah. look at the remaining team roster. Nine players. They have five cheerleaders. Five assistant coaches. He has got the most bloated stats and bloated staff since the Patriots, I swear. Eight fan factor. Paul Thicchetti, three Ray Rolls. Yeah, it looks and like he has 300k in the bank, so... He's already planning for the new season. He's got to replace the blood that's been lost and spilled along the way. So let's take a look there. He's got Harold No Horns as his main blitzer, level four. Maximilian, the nice lad there. He's come along pretty nicely there. High AV increases, of all things. Which actually, for once in this league, is something you really need. And then, of course, the star himself there wraps it around his waist and ties in his knot. Peter North, his other star blitzer, who's been carrying him through this entire season. And then, of course, the one surviving catcher, of course, Tristan. And then he's got for the lineman, Edward and Arnulf. Arnulf? Arnulf? I can't even pronounce that bloody thing. Yeah, Ed Edward, he's a little beat up, but he does the business. And then, of course, the remaining, uh, well, they're still on the team. They still get a paycheck at the end of this one here. Edward, Jorg, and Ulbrecht, Mr. Butterfingers himself. The shame is that with that player, as I've seen his, seen his games, not wrong that nickname. <laughs> he has dropped the ball all four times he's attempted to pick it up. Yeah, well, those three are just going to be what are called as meat shields. That's that's their job this time around. And that's yeah. all they're going to be good for. Oh, uh, yeah, exactly. But it's, it's, it's going to be fun. Let's take a look at the clubhouse there. It hasn't upgraded the stadium. You'd think more people would try to do that occasionally. Especially with the 100k in the bank, he can easily get any inducement he wants. True, but you know, he might be observing the exchange league rules of no inducements allowed. This is what makes this league so bloody interesting. But yeah, Paslebo, right. that was a hell of a path getting here. Hell, his win was a comeback of all things. He looked completely out of it in the first half and then the great comeback and wins it in overtime. And then, of course, you know, here we go. The team that everyone hates. Yeah, no, really, we all hate them. You know, there it is. The Buckhand Bears. Fun fact, they started off their first match with two kills against their opponents. <laughs> that should have told you what this season was going to be like. What do you think of this team? Be honest. Uh, Much like the Patriots, broken and stupid. <laughs> now he's got 200k in the bank not that he really needs it let's take a look at the statistics for the team here now it's going to be fun because it's going to come down to maybe fame will be a big difference this game he's only got one assistant coach 
one cheerleader. I guess he's used them all up and he's fired them before he pays them. You know, good old you know, Grand Theft Five style here. Fan Factor of Eight, one Apothecary, not that he does much. And of course, three team rerolls here. But yeah, it's impressive. 12 players. Actual real players. So he actually has one reserve for this game. Do you have any special impressions on this team? Anything you know, <laughs> you'd like to comment other than you suck? <laughs> well, seeing that the uh, Sibo, he's going to have a pile on Blitzer as well with Strength 4. He's going to have to get rid of Court Snow, that Blitzer, because that's been Cadet's number one play is to try to remove people quick and remove them early with him. Uh, and then maybe work on uh, his Agility 4 after that. He's just going to have to stay away from the Ogre and hope to God he can remove his key players or he's going to be in a lot of trouble really, really fast. Yeah, basically, he does take after our legendary you know, couch cord. He has to remove the hookers you know, from the basement as quick as possible. So, yes, mighty blow, piling on, frenzy, and of course, the block he starts with. Absolutely phenomenal. We can even take a look at the statistics here. And it's just been scary. 90 blocks during the course of the season. 10 casualties inflicted. He's even got 38, so it's scary. He's over... 33% when he breaks the armor, he does something. Yeah, but as you said in your cast, sometimes plan B hit him. That is the best plan, and he has took that to heart. Yeah, you know, but we'll make that the plan, absolutely. And then let's take a look here. Here's the scary part. He made some crazy acquisitions, of course he did, from some decimated skills. Um, and it's actually turned out to be some of the best acquisitions he's made. It's like he brings in the crippled... Hail Mary the Thrower. Buys him because he had nothing but money. You know, gobs of money. Well, he, he's sponsored by Bank of Old Dolph. What else would he do? You know, even though it's an AG2 crippled thrower, it goes on to get even more skills. Absolutely insane. All right. Cadet, he's definitely logged in here finally. He's actually inspecting his team. He's coming out in the dog out there, and he's just, you know, bringing them a free hooker for each of the other players, I swear. But yeah, he still has all four blitzes. He's got two throwers, that's something remarkable. And then, of course, he's got a hell stack of linemen. All of them beat up, except with one exception, pretty much. Who does have a skill of all things, God. But here's the thing. His acquisition in the free market, Angry Togoth, the Ogre, level 4 Ogre. How the hell does the Beefy Balls deal with that? Give me an idea. How do they deal with that? Boots. So step one, get him down. Step two, keep him down. Exactly. Basically, it's trampoline time, isn't it? As long yeah. as he keeps his cleats on. Yeah, well, hopefully someone knows how to keep their cleats on here. Yeah? Okay, so yeah, there you can see, there's your schedule there. Day three, the big finals, beefy balls, and the buckhand beers. Here in the BBPN Exchange League inaugural playoffs... All right, he's logged in there, so I guess now we're going to be waiting for him. All right, as everyone there, I'm just going to go back quickly to your title screen, just really quickly here. See, that's why I love the love cut live cast here, getting the hang of this one here. But yeah, did, did, did you have a good enjoyment there of the, of the Exchange League, or you're thinking you're going to dive in next season and just share the fantasy, share the fun, share the foul? Uh, maybe I might try humans in the main league first, get a little bit more practice with them, because I haven't really played, uh, humans, so. I thought everyone who ever bought the board game has to play humans once, because it's in the starting set. You have to play it at least once. Uh, I don't have the board game. Oh, dear. <laughs> Heretic. Games <laughs> Workshop is expensive. Yes, yes, it is, unfortunately. Yeah, that, that's how, you know, they make bags of money. Problem is, it's actually not bad, cr not bad product, but all the second party, yeah, they're absolutely fantastic. Or you just make a custom football team. As you've yeah. seen on the broadcast, some of us have made some really custom teams. All right, looks like they have gone live. All right, lads, let's get things uh, fired up here. And we're going to bring you to the game here. We'll see what the uh, buggers are doing here. Let's go into Cabal TV. 
search for the match. Okay. The BBPN exchange. At least that's what it's supposed to say. All right, lads. All you already here. We're going to get up the uh, intro music. I know we've got it queued up here. And let's bring things up to start here. All right, we're going to our cameraman live here in this absolutely suck dollinger of a game. It is the Grand Finals. With me, of course, is Ace the Man Face there, loaned over here from the other league. How is it, baby? Ah, it's going all right there, buddy. I'm here to see a real slobber knocker of two teams sit here to kill each other. <laughs> well, yeah, now you're on the trolley there. Okay, let's take a look here. Beefy Bulls coming in as the big underdogs. Three re-rolls, and the fans are giving them everything they've got. You can see the mollies and flappers giving them three blows of a kisses. Holy dooly. And, of course, you can see over here the Buckcan Beers, the heavy favorites going into this absolute sock dollager here. Boy, they really are looking like they're a real egg. Ace, what do you think? Who is going to come away with the big shiny? Uh, I gotta say, it's probably gonna be the Buccaneers, but it's placebo is not known to go down without a fight. So we'll see who's gonna come through this, and who's gonna survive this onslaught of just brutal pounding it. So do you think the Buccaneers are they gonna be ironing their shoelaces in Gloria by the time in the half, or is it gonna be absolutely going down, hitting the giggle water? Uh, I'm gonna say they're gonna be hitting the giggle water. They're gonna be sitting there. I'm gonna, I predict at least one death before even the first half comes around. <laughs> I sense your Mazuma is really on the beefy balls. And how many wooden nickels did you give to the fine man on the side there with a the fedora? Eh, the boss says I'm not supposed to talk about that. <laughs> well, he knows his onions there. This is why Ace is here. Now, as we can see here, yeah. The uh, dear good coach here, he seems to be taking his uh, sweet time here, trying to actually set his Oliver Twists up for the good here charge here. And it's just about we say here. What's with kids today, huh? No yes, respect. He has, he has this big lumbering meat shield here just stopping him. He needs to figure out how he's going to get past him first before he figures anything else out. That's true here. You can take a look here. You know, it's the Buccaneers. They've got one hell of a Joram sitting right there in the center lane there. They've even got, of course, the one reserve, as talked about. And, yes, you can see calling up quickly for you all there at home there, looking at the skills. It's, it's just a beautiful thing to absolutely see there. They're all half sends over from the victory celebration. But they're here, and they're on the pitch. And here we go, the big kick. Today's going to suck! And there we go, it's a pitch invasion, holy dilly here, well, it's going to be a choice be a calico, what does the fans do to him? He's knocked his fucking lights out. What do you think there, they iced in there, was that a real choice piece of calico, or are they going to end up being real cake eaters, tell me true. <laughs> Well, it looks like the, the Buccaneers get off easy as their main players that they want to hit that ball with an excellent onside kick position, don't go down. And the ball retriever for it, for the Beefy Bulls has taken a little bit of a dirt nap for a few rounds. <laughs> yeah, that was a real four flusher, wasn't it there? However, the Beefy Bulls seem to be partly on the receiving end of that pitch invasion. Three of the poor lads down there. Oh, well, that's going to be maybe a bit of cat whiskers for them there. What do you think, Ace? you think it's going to be regrouped for the Buckcan Beers? Or do you think the Beefy Bulls can actually make this a real skeddy drive? Nah, they're going to have to go in and be super aggressive. 
Just like my cousin Lenny used to say, you got to get in there and hit them early. Do not give them any time to breathe. And then it's cement over shoes, or you get with a program. Aye. Well, someone gets to feed the fishes. And the first punch of the day. Let's go and see if he blouses this one up. Come on, Congress doesn't take this long. And there we go, it's a solid fisting. The player is down, nothing else. I usually take that, he's a good sign there. Oh well, maybe it's going to be a bit of a Reuben game. I'm just waiting to see who wants to take the first boot. I want to see someone lay the boot in and lay it in early. Well, why do you have to be such a wet blanket? Or do you just want to see, you know, a couple of widow makers over there with the flappers? You hey, like, we... you like consoling the the, the the flapper widows, don't you? You take great no. joy in that. <laughs> There's just money on this game, and we got a business to run over here. Yeah, hit it there. He's a real four flusher there. Eh? So well, sounds like Betty's to me. All right, clock is ticking here. Beefy balls. They've got to get something moving here, and that's just not going and ironing the shoelaces. Uh, does he do it? Does he chase himself? Yes, we're all waiting here to see. Does he decide to pile on the business here? He does not. There's a first for everything. Well, do you, what do you think about that? It was a real hoity-toity attempt there. He had the stun... Why does he not do it? Ace, tell us true. Why not? He's either scared of the he's either scared of the foul coming in with with the uh, Buccaneers having the reserve, or he's never heard of the of the second rule double tap. <laughs> well, he's a real Miss Grundy then today. Maybe that is the one play that changes the game there. Removing one player could have been everything. Oh well, now you're on the trolley. And it's finally time for the Buck and Beers to actually try and counter-attack and stop this drive. He's lucky that the fans decided to knock out the the Buck and Beers assassin over there. He's sitting there sleeping a little bit. Yes. I'll take it he's not very happy in the dugout right now. Well, it looks like Cord Snow there is having himself a wee bit of a nap there. He's probably dreaming of that good time he had at, you know, Flinny's house, Flinny and Cord's whorehouse. Absolutely a great time had by all. Yeah, his bill was something else, though. He needs to work on money management. Well, as I understand it, that's why Cadet runs a perfectly good speak easy there. Best giggle water in town. Yeah, it's all right. And here he comes. Push me, push you. Does he greet it early? Yes, he does. There's a good solid fisting there. Hey, Burns one reroll. I do not know about that one. Maybe he's trying but to I... go for the early icy mitt of, re of rejection here. On. The beefy balls. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Is it time to play a trampoline? Nah, he's just making sure that with all that guard that they're staying right where he wants them. So no chance he's getting whacked any time today. Oh, he's probably going to whack him, just not right now. He wants to lure him into that false sense of security and then wham! Right into it. Speaking of false sense of security here. All right, beefy balls turn two here. Now we're going to see if he's going to be a real dew dropper this game, or has he got some kind of dark offense in his eye, in his way? Is he going to go left? Is he going to go right? Is he going to go straight for the dugout and iron his shoelaces? Ah, the choices Panther pissing me coffee really wakes you up in the morning. <laughs> I understand that was supplied finally by your boss. Absolutely. Yeah, I would. He he likes to take care of the guys that make sure this ru league runs well. Yeah, he's a real bear cat, isn't he, there, Ace? Eh, 
He can be. There, there's some days I, I have some choice words about him, but means you're either going to be on ice, you're being grilled, and basically that means you have fish. You'll be swimming with the fishes. Bit of indecision here by the beefy bulls. Look, it's easy. Stand up. <laughs> I know. It looks like the players are just like, I don't want to be hit today. I want to live. It's like, I'm sorry. You knew the risk when you signed up. You should have never signed up in the first place then. This is the Grand Finals here, baby! And remember, for all of those who have watched the great epic drive here, the Beefy Bulls, you thought were out of their last game, but it was one of the greatest comebacks we've ever seen. In fact, as we understand it, it was the first tr almost true pitch clear of the entire exchange league. Absolutely a thing of absolute icy mitt rejection for Flush of Beauty. I understand you won quite a lot of money on that game there, Ice. Yeah, the boss wasn't too happy, though, because he decided to bet against and he lost a lot of money. So I've heard reports that the coach has mysteriously disappeared recently, and I, I wouldn't know anything about that. Oh, I've heard many things coming from the diesel burners, you know, management side. We lost him. Come on, how is this so hard? You stand up. Is there nobody home? I mean, Congress doesn't take this long about prohibition. Don't say that word around here. We have sponsors, we have payments. Please, like, like, like the doors would ever let alcohol be outlawed. Because this is America. Home of the land, home of the free, home of men properly voting and women in their proper place. Hey, he only has one, he only has like two moves left. Sweet mother of God, what is the hold up? Question is, where does he want to use his blitzer? He's going after the big beef. And here it is, the Joram takes it in the ski. Is this the big excitement? Oh, he, does he, he breaks do the it? armor. Come on! Everybody's waiting here! Don't be a dude dropper! This could be the play! There it is! I killed everybody! He got him! Absolutely! And there goes the apothecary early! It does work! But there was the prediction you made early on in the cast there! Holy! Dooley, this is totally blouse. How did you know, Ace? How did you know? Let's just say we have friends in high places watching the game. That could be the play that absolutely dogs the game. Maybe the beefy balls have decided they need eggs for breakfast. But now with the doctor coming out. He has no one to save him from the rest of the from the rest of the team as they're gonna st as he's probably gonna start removing left and right if if that blitzer keeps it up. But right now everything for the beefy balls is absolutely shake there. All right, let's see if they can send this one over there and let's see if the beefy balls really know their onions. Give us an insight here. Ace, what do you think? Is it going to be a solid scrum? Or is he going to go for the real Mizuma and screen this one up here? What is your insight? I think he's going to scrum it up a bit. See if he can hurt, whack someone on his end. And get a little early pressure in. Ah, here comes all that fine and wonderful guard. And here's solid distance. Cadet loves to scrum it up. He he just loves to sit there and scrum it up and make, make sure that you, you have to work for it. And that's just at the poker table. Don't get me started on Russian roulette. Yes, I heard last time he actually took on a little gold princess bell. And well, let's just say Cadet is wearing a fancy new tiara. 
Well, it had diamonds in it. Of course he's going to make sure he gets it. And here he comes, straight from the brothel. Right straight into a solid fisting. What a Reuben. And into a double skull. I see Every... mitt. Absolute I see mitt there. Today's going to suck. I think I see Cadet over there getting the gun ready. Looks like he's getting out the broom handle. He's going to do some sweeping of his own team. Holy <laughs> dilly. And I think it seems like the coach Placebo looks like he's a little in shock of what just happened. You mean he's winning? <laughs> yeah, so I got to admit there, it might be actually suspect. We're going to have to go talk to the league commissioner, Tasserin, about has the beefy balls put the bets on themselves to win? Come to think of it, did Cadet place the bet on the beefy balls to win? Maybe there's some kind of, you know bit of nobody home crackers betting going on the sideline which you do not have to comment on ace i do value my galoshes <laughs> does he do it again oh you know he's got to feel the temptation he's got to he's already had one success can you make it two Come on, now you're on the trolley. You've already removed the biggest Jorum on the field. It doesn't look like he's going to do it. Hey, phrasing! Not today. Absolutely icy mitt. He's actually going to try and protect the Calico. That is a crazy decision in this game. However, one does not doubt the beefy balls considering what they've done to actually get to this grand finals. But he's making a right, and I mean a right scrum of this, and Cadet's making a right poser of his position right now. And meanwhile, take a look at the rerolls. Who would have thunk it? Not even going into the beginnings of the end and the end of turn three there. And already the back end beers. Well, they've pissed away two pits of Panther. They've only got the one left. Ah, the Gloria block on block. Like another day at the old hen house. All right, beefy balls. Uh, he's moving the calico up here. It's like he's tempting fight. Well, luckily that catcher went ahead and went to the workout booth because he has three strengths. So it's going to be a little harder to take him down. Yeah, he really is an absolute cake eater, that one. That could be a bit tough, but we have seen the casualties mount in this league. I hear the Scar House of Undertaking has already got three wagons parked out back for the inevitable, you know, con contestant and volunteers. And a loner tax and it's another double skull. That's easy! Well, indeed, that is absolutely easy by the player there. Is that the break the beers need? And here they go. Good solid fisting there on the flank, but now do they actually risk everything to try and collapse? There we go. We must overreact immediately. Well, admittedly, it's only a bell rung, but for all we know, that could be permanent. We have seen how crazy these games go. Sometimes it's really dark, and other times, those KO'd players are real dewdroppers. I'm going to try to get... Try to get rid of a second one. Can he do it? Yes, he Yay for me! And the Scar House of Undertaking is absolutely ecstatic. There goes the Apothecary. And he's still completely rubened. I, that covers my over-under, so I'm happy about that. <laughs> Mistake! 
And as you can see mm. there, he didn't even have to lay in the full flusher mitt. And that means he's still standing. Mocked on the ball carrier there. The Calico is in serious danger there. From the heights of victory to the jaws of agonizing defeat. There's a motto in there somewhere. And that was an AV9 guard piece. That was a critical block that he just pulled off. How much Panther piss has he loaded, caught up with in this game? How many flappers are in his basement? Though can his strengths four outdo his the other blitzer and return the favor? And meanwhile, the beers recovering on that one impressive hit. No doctors left for the rest of the game. It's going to be absolutely decimation up and down the field. I can see over there on the sideline, Scar's undertaker service is right now a gleam with delight there. And I can see the passing of many, many bags of galosh. Yeah, I don't know if that's for his player, if that's going to be for the coach after the game. <laughs> and this is why we absolutely love this game. All right, beefy balls. Not the first time they've been absolutely held against the wall. Can they take it on the lamb? Come on, you do drippers here. There we go. It's a solid hit. He's got the punch. Could this be another absolutely <laughs> giggled as he sends Dover? He's down, but he's not out. I would use... Personally, I would use piling on at this point. He needs to get a removal. Aye, but the club head coach, he's only trying that when he actually sees a stun to actually guarantee a reroll on the injury roll. Let's face it, Placebo there knows his onions. He has absolutely no Miss Grundy, but he must be feeling it today after that shocking result. Push me, push you. He has freed up the calico, but where's he lambing it? I don't think that was the smartest push. He just pushed him into the lawn to smack this guy that has been an assassin the entire league season right on his key player. Now just remember, there might not be a tomorrow for any of these players here. But nobody is home, and maybe both teams have gone absolutely crackers. And I think he forgets that player has guard as he marks him up. <laughs> you can hear the eyebrows knitting on the sidelines. And there he goes. He's turning the flank. He's also risking him as an assist. Gets the good solid punch here. And the blouse continues on. Baby balls. Need to recover something after that big shocker. Yes, they might have got rid of the Joram, but they are out. One of their true berries. And permanently, too. Well, at least he's not swimming with the fishes. But as you would say, it's early days. Decimated. And that was it for turn four here. Now he absolutely, because of the injury, has to make sure he gets one. Son, end zone, it's over here. Makes you glad in this fantastic sport there that humans play this sport there. Not like any of the other childish races you see around the leagues. All the minor leagues, because this is Major's baby. This is where the real gold coin is. I swore yeah. I saw I swore I saw a dwarf in a trench coat trying to act like a midget to get in the league. Could you imagine the uh, other impure races actually playing this fine sport? This is a real man sport for true races to play. Come on, beers. Do you have I it see. in you? 
And I see that red line is at the sniper. I think this, I think this Blitzer's living a very, very short life here. As you can see here, he's got a critical guard here. He's going for it. It's only a push. Yes, absolutely. Oh, no! Mortality clarified in a single strike. Armor on that. that is now the second double skulls by the beers. And they are all out of ray rolls. Is this the change, Ace? Is this the change? I think it might be. That's the second greed he's done, and this time it comes back and bites him in the ass. Makes you wish you could do a counter pylon, doesn't it? <laughs> Would you have done that? <laughs> no doubt about it, but he's lucky that he didn't break armor on the first hit. That's twice now he's been hit with no armor broken. Well, this is it. It all comes down to this. Poor Red Mad-Eye, a survivor of the crush of 1818. And there he is, the free safety. You can see he still has the you know, patches of crutches strapped to his old go-getters there. No Oliver Twist, this lad. But he might be the one who saves the entire game. No, really, take a look in the back. Take a look at that poor one. Ray Mad Eye, all the way in the back. Uh, oh. Someone's got to do the dirty jobs. Well, guess what? He can put on a uniform, and that's as dirty as it can get on this team. From where I'm saying, it looks like all he has is a bunch of one dies that he's going to have to throw to get out of this one. But he does have a good, you know, idea here. He does have a trolley. Three trolleys, in fact, on the side here. No. Doesn't break, but does he do it? Will he risk it? No, he does not. Fantastic. And the beefy balls, you can see. Interesting gesturing coming from the sidelines there. What kind of language is that he's actually using there? That has got to be some of the most expressive gestures I've ever seen. I can only hazard a guess to what he's saying. And I mean hazard. But if he wants to take the chance, he could get this lineman with a dodge and get him down there as a, as a potential threat to score. Taking a look there, it is Tristan himself. He's done all the extra little working out there. The flappers absolutely adore him there. Blodger, he's got the extra increase, of course. Does he risk everything? He's got to make sure this drive is a proper score there. That Calico needs to be in the end zone. Otherwise, it's do drop a time, and he's going to be four flushed for this game. A lot of indecision going on here. There's more gesturing, and now here we go. It's the 10 second offense. Oh, he's going to go with the blitz with the ball carrier himself, and he's coming back around. You may fire when ready. Executed with impunity. Well, there might be a critical stun, and down he goes. Sloppy. First reroll used and down. And he is. And he KO'd himself. A trifling victory. But a victory nonetheless. That may have been too early, too quick. Three beefy balls are off the pitch this drive. It is eight on ten. And, and there are their doubles. Is. Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. What kind of winning nickels have the beers taken for this game? That might be, of all things, the break the beefy balls need to score this calico. There he goes. Run, you full run. As long as he keeps that tackle blitzer pinned, he, he has a... Really good chance of getting into that end zone. 
Run, bitch! Run! And maybe, as predicted there, Ray Maddai, he may be the player that saves this for the Bears. Who would have thunk it? A no-name limping on the field, suffering critical injuries there, but the flappers have loved him. Must be something to do with the missing eye and the missing five toes on two legs. Something must be attractive about a man with scars. You know all about that, don't you, Ace? Eh. I mean, ever since I got this scar from a bar fight way back when, the ladies do seem to look at me a little different. As I understand it there, the flappers think it's just you giving other men a chance there. You're so humble, Ace. You're so humble. This is why they call you the face. Well, he's going to have to hurry up and decide this move soon if he doesn't want to run out the clock once again and rush it. Taking a look in the back line there. Edwin has got to come moving up. Yeah, here we go. Just as I say it, here comes the strong lad here. He's going to try and turn the corner. I don't think that was a smart play, though, because he is still in blitz range of the, the catcher, and he is and he is AG4. Well, he has indeed feed up Central Advar. Yes, it is the lucky loner here demonstrating for the team that, yes, he could be of a good use here. Maybe if they end up being the real egg and the champions of the season, he's hoping for a contract. And he's also freed up the guard player. He's freeing up a lot of players to get back and touch his catcher. He does not want any of these players anywhere near that player right now. And as we go back to the highlights of BBP and Extreme there, we can show all the skills of the players. He has quite the free up here, including, yes, Peter North, the man who may end up carrying this team. Hard to believe Rad Mad Eye may actually be the man who saves this game for the beers. He has 30 seconds left on the clock to decide on what to do. That sounds to be more than my time with the flapper in bed last night. It's, it sounds like it's longer than what most men last when they're with your sister, I hear. Hey, let's not talk about that flapper there. She is part of the family business, and we mean business. If you think bought that panther piss you're drinking this morning there, Ice. And there we go, he does screen it from the AG4 Blitzer, so he's smart enough to notice the threat. Here it comes the hit. Grass grows, birds fly, the armor. sun shines, and brother, I hurt people. And he's rung the bell indeed, holy dilly. Well, that's really hoity-toity, but does he risk it all to mock up poor Ray Maddai? And he makes the last minute push me and shove off. Nothing happening. There's a bit of risk and good gravy. He actually gets away with it. Everyone falls down in a heap. <laughs> Can the Buccaneer save this? Is the Blitzer in range to tag up with his guard? Oh, five, six, yes. The Blitzer is well within range to tag up. He need to move Peter North one up to cover from the Blitzer. Let's see what he actually decides to do. Is it going to be all Jake? Or is he going to be chasing himself all the way to defeat? The Beers mad scramble there after the disaster of not one but three double skulls. Can they make it a triple this game? Well, with his tackle player down, he's looking for a pow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He can make it to the ball carrier with a go for it, but he is hoping he does not roll yet another one. Now, the good thing is, in this wonderful game of Blood Bowl, what are the odds of things going incredibly wrong that many times? And, and he gets it. Get over here! 
And the Calico has gone off the sides with the fans throwing it. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. What a beautiful spot and easily recoverable for the Beefy Bulls. That's got to look toity toity. That's got to look toity toity. He can actually score it right now with Peter North if he sides. <laughs> Fail dodge. Hasta la vista, baby. He could go all out. Go around, pick it up with two GFIs and score with Peter North right now if he feels like it. This could be the big decision here. This is the finals here, baby. This is absolutely the grand finals. He's looking at it. This could be the biggest critical play ever of this drive. Beefy Bulls, as you can see, have paid dearly on this advance there. They are out a permanent good player for this game. However, as you can see by the beers, they have burned the good sawbones. And they might have, have to try and hold this one here dearly and grimly for the Mazuma. Once again, Beefy Bulls will not be rushed into crazy actions. That's just placebo style. He likes to take his time and analyze everything on the field. That's what my sister said last week. Two re-rolls left. Turn seven and eight. He's not going to risk like the direct markup. Well, it looks like he's going to screen it and plan for failure. He knows his onions, this coach. And here it goes. It looks like he's going for it. Yay! He does have the ball. Dun, dun, dun. And he's going to stall it. I don't know about that scum. It seems like a high risk with all the players in pursuit. What this are your thoughts on that? This is his thinking. Yeah, he gets away with it. Well done there. Tristan does the damage. Removes what the critical players. Now here's the question. Does he risk the absolute direct markup of that fine and handsome player blitzer <laughs> right down the field there i think he has to or at least go up top and screen him so he doesn't have an easy path around to the ball carrier he has to set up a proper icy mitt here let's see if it all goes ski he has left the pathway but is the pathway of risk let's see one two three four five six seven eight it is a go for it. And meanwhile, that fine, handsome fellow, Yorick, single-handedly is holding up two of the beefy bulls. Give that lad a contract. He needs to move him one more over. And that is it for the beefy bulls. Is it enough to set up an icing mitt? Or is this just too hoity-toity? And is the beers going to find a way? Well, there's only one person in blitz in a blitz range, and that is the that handsome fellow down at the field there. It's going to take a little finagling, though, to get in in position for at least a one-die blitz on him. <laughs> ah, but you can see here, if you do the trick, if he does show his bit of Oliver Twist skill there, Cord himself can actually get into position to add the second dice. What is he doing? It looks like he's just going to break a hole in Mark. Surprise, motherfucker. Well, after doing all that there, you've got to go for the removal. And he's not going to. He decides not to do it. Well, it sounds like Betty's if you're absolutely the beefy bulls. Is that a mistake? 
say he's just gonna mark the ball carrier, but he forgets the catcher has dodge and a strength up. That's gonna be an easy two die block removal. Ah, oh, but we all know about this absolutely fine game there. It's always cake eating time in there. We'll see if it ends up being a wet blanket on the dodge. Oh, we actually seen for the first time in there sobriety affecting the beers. That midget in the trench coat might have stole all the and might have stole all the beer being a dwarf. He might have took all the beer before the match. That might explain why they're sober. I guess nobody is actually home there for the beers. Have they made a mistake? Are they deciding to risk this and actually gamble away? Or are they thinking the long game here? Are they actually deciding maybe they're going to do the same thing that the beefy balls did? Take this one into overtime. This could be a long day, you know, ladies and well, certain gentlemen. And there he goes! Oh my god, who the hell cares? Looks like he took a dive there. And this is it. Is your prediction going to be true, Ace? Let's see how well you know this game. Well, we'll see if it can surprise... Which can, can and has surprised me in the past, but that's the play I see. is just an easy dodge and two die blitz to push the blitzer off. That's all he's looking for. All it's coming down to is a one in nine. This will decide things. Has the price been paid enough to score? Or is this uh, going to be a four flusher time? He may indeed have made the smarter move. Strength four, blitz away, clears them off. Holy dooly! And now the frenzy comes back to haunt him. He didn't think that one through. And now he's fully committed. He's got to dodge away. He and makes he it. it! And listen Get to the... those fans. Get this man a medal. And that may have been the result he did not want to see there. Bit of recovery with the sniffing salts. And the beers are looking mighty healthy. Full roster one more time. And that dirty rat right there, that, that rat bastard just, just makes a mockery of the Buccaneers on that drive. What was he thinking there? Definitely been sniffing his ski. He was sensed over yet somehow gets away and even does get the score. Well, it looks like it de has hired some thugs to make sure that those two do not get back up. I, I need to go and talk to him. What, what brand of chloroform he found for those? Apparently, it's stair dust. The absolutely most fab bland you can actually get here this side of the ocean. As we can see, he's lining up here. The beers are going to pay him back dearly. This could be inexpensive because look at the count here. <laughs> it's not lit. Only eight players left to hold, but not the first time the beefy balls have been in this position. And like they actually need it. Oh, yeah. Hard to believe that the beefy balls are going to be going out of the half with the three rerolls they started. The Joram gives a good mitt, but he's a real dew dropper, nothing happening. And now this is the hit we're all wondering about. And he's down. Does he get him? Here's the second chance. Perfect sixes on the armor, but nothing going for the injury. Now. Does he lay the boots in? He's got to be thinking about it. This is the time. I think this is where he has to play trampoline time. But will the beers realize this is the moment they have to do it? And smart move. He's going. He looks like he's going to go after the one actual player and not the loners come up from the farm team.
And here it comes. Hey, and got him. yes. Ah! I, Ed, why? He was just helping him up. Yeah, fortunately there, the referee Zebra's Guild is done to keeping this game fair and balanced. And there they go, they're off to go iron the shoelaces for today. This halftime, of course, is brought to you by Marijuana, by the beautiful Christmas-centric gift for all your wonderful needs. So says absolutely do drop a Ronald Reagan. Marijuana, the smoke of choice here for all your choice flappers. Really, that's an ad. So, uh, it looks like the Beefy Bulls get a very important player back, a Mighty Blow AV9 guard blitzer. So maybe he could start with a few good hits, start evening up the numbers here. We saw that before with the Beefy Bulls. They were severely playing us down against the Diesel Burners. And then you saw the greatest comeback. It was a real icy mitt there. And in the end, everything was shaken. Here they are in the grand finals. However, taking a look here, at the beers, still a full 11 roster here. 11 on 8. That's going to be a real rejection here. He's going to be grilled all up and down the front line. As Ace the Face would say, everything might be pounding it up and down the stream. And it looks like Cadet's going to be targeting that AV9 Blitzer once again. I see that look in Cord Snow's eyes. He has that look in him. Are you sure that's not venereal disease? Sure, hope not. Now, as he says, he's a real man. It only hurts him when he pisses. This is going to be a real interesting day. Can the Fifi Bulls icy mitt this drive? As you can see here, he has gone with a stock as the retriever. He's got the calico. Tonight we hunt. And off to a fast start. Bell rung there by the acquisition. Hail Mary, probably the best 300 quid he's actually spent this day. And who I thought an AG2 thrower would have been a good requisition. Oh My dear. goodness. Who knew they paid for that one there? It's something like the beefy balls are taking a dive. Is this a four flusher moment? There's two, and suddenly there's only six remaining players. He must have said something about his mother with how hard he's been smacking him around. Now finally block on block, and for once there, the beers do not decide to greet a reroll. He's looking like an absolute baddies at this point here. 11 on 6. It's hard to see this game going any other way other than a win for the Buccaneers unless they can... Unless the Beefy Bulls' Blitzers can start evening up the numbers. Well, Jordan the Ski, he's finally decided to hit the Panther Piss. He must have enjoyed it all that nice sitting off on the field. There we go. Can he make it 3? He can! Work complete! No! 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 The horror! The horror! Problem, and he takes care of another dirty little rat on the front line. What has happened? What, what Mazuma was promised during the halftime show? 
while ironing the shoelaces here. Maybe you promised them all concrete galoshes. And then there was five. Three punches, three removals. Beefy balls. You wanted yourself a challenge. Well, there it is. It could be wooden nickel time. And he's trying to make sure that that blitzer has nothing to hit. Well, I'm not too sure I'd be Jake about that one here. He's got plenty of things to hit. I just don't like any of them. Well, this is it here. Beefy Bulls desperately now just want to get their players recovered from the Cathedral and help to win the toss. He's taken oh, one yeah. down. Grass grows, birds fly, sun shines, and brother, I hope... Oh, he's piling on the KO. Is it a mistake? Yes, yes it, it is. is. And that's probably going to cost him right there. He needed that free removal while still standing there. Beefy balls in a rage-induced moment there of hitting Panther Piss there have now absolutely ruined themselves up there and have changed the removal into still on the pitch there. That could be the mistake that really does change the nature of this game. Though I can see why he did it, the, the coach was readying a body bag on the sideline. He dared to dream. He absolutely dared to dream. He does make the easy Oliver Twist run around. And now, do the beers go chase themselves? They do not want to risk this going into a possible flip of the choice coin and going into overtime. They have seen the beefy balls pull out miracles. Well, with this many removals, I see Cadet scoring quick and trying to get it back. He has all the room in the world to just run it down the field. Uh, it sounds like Betty's to me there. It's all up to the beefy balls to be the real wet blanket. Still wondering why he chose to actually go for the kill move when he had the removal. But Joram is on the move. Boy, I can feel the ground shake from here as he runs. Truth be told, then would say that's just me sister. When she's hard at work there. All right, Beers. Do they decide to just run it down the right side quick as can be? It looks like that possibly is the true decision there. Is he on the trolley? Right. With that go for it, he is in he is in range for that score. A quick little rejection hit there. Does not want that player staying in position. So thanks to that piling on and the numbers advantage, I could see a boot in the future of this player. If you're the Beers, you absolutely lay on the boot, and then we see if the Referee's Guild is indeed paying attention one more time. Absolutely no trust does not want to risk the cage die. And there is a quick push there. Saves the reroll. Frenzy's through. Three dice. It's not the triple skull we all were hoping for. Does he do it? Somewhat. Get over here! All right, beefy balls here. Do they make up for the big mistake? Uh, 
this is when you use piling on. And he decides not to use piling on. He's regretting his life choices already here. Well, he bloused it already. And now here he goes. He's going to save the player for the potential overtime. Or possibly if this is a quick score, he's going to need this to do a quick drive. Knowing this coach, there's no such thing as saving. Cord's not Cord's not the one in the in the mercy business. And now Albrecht Butthole Fingers does he actually get away from the Joram. Oliver Twisty is good golly, Miss Molly. Here's the question, do you score now and try to come back and steal the ball with three permanent players out? You do not want to risk the overtime, but you also don't want to risk the drive. However, it's just a simple flip of the coin and this could all be over. Well, it looks like he does not trust his dice to go for that GFI, though can you blame him? Well, he's the one who's got the Mizuma there. He is the egg of this league. Now, here's the question there. Do you lay the boot in to poor Tristan? What a suck dodger this has been. Here it comes Port uh. Snow. And get off my lawn! Does he have him? Surprisingly, no. Shenanigans! 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 Is it possible they're finally tired from all that day at the brothel? But Cord has turned this into a right slobber knocker of a match. And he comes, he thinks he has the rest of the beefy balls well and truly contained here. Now here is the question there. Does he just decide to burn the clock out and make this a scrum on the sidelines? Well, if I was the beefy balls, I would go for the quick blitz up top and put the boot in that blitzer. He has done nothing but make your life a living hell. Oh, this is a push. He grades it away. Does get a solid fist. Down he goes. Does he egg him up? Oh, no. Whoa. You know you have to hand it, and he saves the player one more time. Beefy Balls once again looking at the absolute long game being a true wet blanket. Hey, is he going to put the boot in though? Looks like he's just trying to save his strength for player of all people. Does Tristan actually risk getting up? He can't just lie there. Can't resist him. He is like Calico lying out there in the speakeasy. And once again, Oliver Twisty is. He gets away with it. And there's the boot. And unfortunately, it was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Yeah, there we see the referees guild. They are ensuring the grand finals is the fairest cold game of them all there. What a wonderful nation we are when referees absolutely are fair, balanced and not susceptible to a quick bribe. Uh, at least he's calling it both ways and not and not only giving one team the advantage here. Meanwhile, the Beers trying to inflict some more damage there, taking advantage of the one critical error early in this drive by the Beefy Balls on the removal. And now here it comes. This might be the rescue of the player. Hmm. Beers are definitely being very Miss Grundy on this drive here. They think everything is going there, Jake, but can it all go wrong? Well, the beefy bulls better hope that they get those three KOs back in the next drive, or this this is probably going to be the Buccaneers game. 
And the Joram takes off in hot pursuit. He wants to see how much can Peter North continue being the Oliver Twist of this entire game. Beefy balls. Remaining players on the field. Yes, you see that right, gents. It is only four remaining players. Three injuries. A callous rejection. And, of course, three bells have been rung. And maybe he's absolutely crackers. But maybe he risked the dive to actually pop the ball free. What would happen if that play actually succeeds? Well, he has a 50% to a 33% dive in with a... Two, two red die with block. Do you risk it being the grand finals? Do you absolutely risk it here? Is it too hoity-toity for him there? Or is he going to be a wooden nickel? There's a lot of thought going on and a lot of hand gesturing. Once again, Oliver Twist, he gets away with it. Solid fist. I approve. And there's another KO. And he leaves that one to sit. Finally, he is lit restraint, unlike in the hen house. Though he does need to move one GFI over if he wants to try to get a hit on B. Oh dear. Ooh, you suck. And butterfingers, Oliver Twisty is not. All season long, living up to his name. Can't make a dodge, can't make a pickup. He can't even make pay. And this is it. The Joram comes in here. The beers are going to make them pay dearly for that insult. Looks like he's going to go for a three die block on the. Well, we all know the Beers have to prove this one game. They are truly the cat whiskers of this league. But is Cadet really going to go for overtime? I think that might be a mistake. You can see it if it gets down to the last absolute tick of the clock. You can see Tristan trying for the miracle play just to remove the ball. Speaking of removing balls, here we go. I broke your stupid crap, moron. That AV9 doing wonders. Cord must be tired. And this is it. Beefy Bulls. Turn 13. They are looking at the Mizuma fading away in the distance. Look at all that God. It is absolutely priceless. I don't think Peter North has many options. Well, all of them are pretty bad unless he decides to take on the Joram himself. He's going to concede the touchdown and come back and save Peter North, it looks like. Now remember, Tristan has some high speed. He can actually still get in there. He can still get a stock, even at this range. He's not a complete Ruben, this coach. That does give him a one-die block to try to save Peter North out of this pickle. Intense thought. Does he want to do this? Do it! And finally fails an Oliver Twist play. I'm saving rerolls for overtime, it looks like. Indeed, no one is using anything here. I mean, well, there it is. Solid hit. He's down. Does he have him? Panda. Side relief over there from the coach. Yes, it's true. It's only just a stun. It keeps the player alive. But do you lay the boot in? And meanwhile, everyone's coming here. He's trying to get rid of Tristan. Push me, push you. No greed this time here. The beers have learned a lesson of greed. Greed is not good for you in this game here. Keep your eye on the egg. Where is he going now?
If he scores now, he has two turns to try to come back and get the ball on defense. No, it looks like the Bears have committed. They are going to make this the great stall out. And they're bringing everyone back. I think I... I don't know. I thought that was about to be a boot in the future there. Considering how good the Zebra Guild has actually been today, there, everything is not Jake with them. They are definitely on the take indeed. They're on the take with the league. Someone is actually making sure they are properly paid and well soshed. Here it is, Beefy Balls. It's the moment of great rejection and maybe rescue. Good solid punch. And Tristan can break free one more time. And Tristan is free one more time. He is clearly saving him for the epic victory in the overtime. Turn 15, Beers. He's just hoping Cord doesn't get his grubby little paws on him. You have to admit at this point here, sticking the trampoline into Peter North there, lying on the ground, not the bed he's used to lying in. That has to be pretty tempting at this point. But just looking at the dugout, though, this is remind me of a certain Valentine's Day in Chicago. Boy, that was some times back then. Some would say that was an absolute massacre. It's all a matter of perspective with it, really. Yeah, go chase yourself. And here it is. Just the block on block immediately conserving the re-rolls it's going to be everything for overtime what are the odds we're actually going to decide this by penalty kicks oh no he's it. caught tristan i will look for you i will find you and i will kill you and he did that might be the injury of the game he is out for this one Yep, absolutely. It is a complete, what did they say back there in the old town? Brohoof. Cord may have finally earned his keep today. He has got the eggs cooking on the grill as we speak. Beefy Bulls, last three players. And he accepts a good solid fisting right there. And I think it was at this, this moment showing that he knew that even he if you don't up. break the armor, sometimes you have to use piling on. And this may be it. This may be the beefy balls. Absolute last stand. Block on block. He's staying alive here. Herald may be the last hope of this team. But do you stop trampolining the players? That's got to be a bit of temptation at this point here. And he scores it in. Um, I think it's all over, but that fat halfling, halfling dying at this point. Oh, look at there. The beefy bulls, they're not giving this one up. And you can hear the crowd is cheering for them. They're going to give them everything they've got today. This is going to be it. It is the last drive as the wolves are running out in the back streets. One turn, and then it's a flip of the coin, and we're going to see which is it going to be there. Who gets the calico? Five players. Possibility to get one more back. 
Beefy balls, they've done comebacks before, but nothing like this. Five on 11. The beers are definitely getting ready for the for their choice little piece of hardware. They want to take the silverware helm there and show that they, yes, have indeed have earned the eggs of this league. Extra ray roll. Is that going to make all the difference? Who knows? All right. This is where it might come down. They need a choice removal anywhere. I think he made a mistake. He put the blitzer on the player with block versus not putting him against the lineman that doesn't have it. That's a good solid hit. Can he get a result? And get off my lawn! Is this the beginning? Beefy balls. Score a quick removal. And guess who they're going after one more time? Do they grade it? He's got the frenzy. And he will follow that up. Here's the courage. He's got him. Does he finish it off? Yeah. Suddenly, smash. Give him an Shut A for up and effort. Take my money. Not today. Look at the effort tried. Look at the chain of what? Oh, there's the food. Message for you, sir. Fortunately for the referee, it looks like he's just trying to kindly help him up. No call on the accidental stepping on the groin. Now it's all going to come down to this. Call it. And it looks like the Buccaneers have chose to receive, and it looks like that's going to be all but over. Beefy Bulls. They are still going to show up and give them a fight. The last five players. They have managed to finally thin the numbers down. It is ten beers versus five, a two-on-one. Sounds like your boss's day in Congress. Yeah, that was a right day right there. I think this shows that if, I think if you use piling on a little bit more, the numbers might be a little different. Maybe that one mistake. If that had been an extra player still off, you never know. As you can see here, the beers stacking the line. A little bit of paranoia in the back that just in case here the calico goes wild. And here we go. Oh well, it's just gonna be a bit of wind there. Ooh. Oh, you are a smart one. I understand now. And here it is. Will the beers four flush themselves or is this the end? <laughs> And make that four on the pitch. Edwin has decided he's not taking any more wooden nickels. He is done with this game. Does he make it two? Hail Mary. The surprise acquisition doing a phenomenal job there. Makes you wonder why his team released him. And Jorg here looks like he's about to have a very fun friend introduced to him. Well, don't worry, the Yorima Ski is maintaining ever since he's had that, you know, quick death experience there on turn one. He's just not been the same old game. And he's got the Calico there. And he's on the move. Yo! And now, here we go. Push me, push you. This means the beefy balls, the surviving four players. Do you risk everything to go after the ball carrier?
Looks like he might be just saving his players for a last ditch cage dive effort. Down he goes. Your skills are inferior. And that was absolutely quick there. Holy dooly, he's gone completely crackers here. Meanwhile, the Beers, they just want to celebrate. Watch this one down the field there. I do suspect they are going to take their careful time and cage it up. Now you can see there, he is absolutely strutting forward like a true cake eater. He wants to put this one away. And you can see here, absolutely the beers moving with absolute caution. Beefy balls, they're going to have to go and look and see if they can actually see if it's Christmas or not. Well, as I said, he might be, he might be saving for a cage dive. Or is he just going to concede it? It looks like he's just going to concede the touchdown and that's going to be it. Looks like he's running off with his two stars to iron his shoelaces and down again. But maybe he's on to something here. He is actually seeing no success there. No Oliver Twist story here. It may be Christmas. Is everyone going down? Nope, it's just a push. Now they have been offered free giggle water no matter what the result is. Maybe he thinks it's time for next season. And here come the beers. Yeah, this is no longer just a drive. This is a victory lap there. Absolutely, Dob. I think we see who our possible champion finally is. I think there's no possible about it here, Scum. This this rat has done it. He's come in and, just like every other game, made sure to assassinate the players to win. Well, he's definitely assassinated. He has done some serious damage there. Yeah, you can actually see the cast is strutting it in. Even the Joram is finally just taking a wee bit of a stride. And yeah, it looks like it's breakaway time. I won't be surprised if just for it to be cheeky, he tries to give it to the Ogre to score. Now, wouldn't that be absolutely good to see a Joram a ski? I see Minute. For the next couple of turns, we have seen multiple failures. Though so with how Cord brought this game back, I think he should give it to Cord Snow and let him take the honors of winning this game with bringing this game back with the damage he caused. Well, we're taking a look over there at the sidelines there. Perceval has broken out the broom sweeper there. Why do you think he's going to take this out into the back alley? And I don't want to know what he's going to be doing with that typewriter. And he's going to write him his story with extreme punctuation. And here come... Yes, they're running off there to iron their shoelaces there. He knows his onions. He figures that's it. He's on the toot. And he's going to be moving on to next season. And there and we here have it. The You're beers. champion. Listen to that crowd. They have done it. The Beers have marched all the way. As the final whistle is finally marked. Yes, the crowd is still standing ovation. They are still applauding away. There. The Cake Eaters have finally done it. They are the true eggs. Four flushed. I see Met. 2 1 is your score. Beers over the beefy balls in the inaugural exchange. Final comments, Ace. Comments. Just a real slobber knocker. Cord Snow comes in and he shows that why he is the assassin of the league. He decided to make sure that he got nothing going and ended up with four players left on the pitch for an 
easy victory lap into the end zone. Well, as we can see there, the pitch is getting truly blanketed right now there by the absolute supporters. Nobody's home in the stands there. And they're just showing that the Bears have proved to be the cat whiskers of the first season. It has been solely played. No real mistakes there. Balls out of chats. Final thoughts there, Ace, before we take it to the final dugout. Congrats to the Buccaneers, you dirty rat, and I hope to see you next year. But be careful, because you're just not paying the target on your back for for some uh, interesting people. A bit of payback. That's good to hear there. Well, you always wear the true cake into this league there, Mr. Face. All right, signing off. Last words there, Ace, do you sign off? Just remember... He's spilling blood for that blood god. And remember, next season, may Nuffle bless your dice. Not you, Beers. Not you. May your dice chip and shatter.